Good afternoon, uh, good morning, or good night if you are attending this virtually. Uh, my name is Pandu Aji. Uh, I work for the Azure Machine Learning Infrastructure team at Microsoft. Um, so we build, uh, we run and maintain uh, Kubernetes clusters for the Azure Machine Learning team. And we build tools to improve uh, the speed and the reliability of the deployments and, we, and to also increase the observability of the application running in the cluster. Uh, about five years ago, uh, we started to explore uh, logging solutions for Kubernetes. Uh, there are two open source projects that caught our attention, uh, FluentD and FluentBit. We went with uh, FluentD at that time because FluentBit was missing uh, some key features, uh, false, false system buffering, and then the scripting plugin. Uh, but fast forward, uh, about a year ago, uh, our business is growing, and we are looking uh, for more uh, efficient uh, logging solution. So we revisited FluentBit, and we found both uh, missing features have been supported. Uh, and also, we found that uh, many people have updated the FluentBit for their Kubernetes logging solution. So we made a switch early last year, and overall we've been in Fluent ecosystem for about five years. So this is our production environment, the current state of it. Uh, some of the interesting numbers are the overall log volume, which is somewhere between 750 to 850K per second. In our busiest region, uh, the log volume per cluster is about 80K per second, and the log volume per node is varies between one to two K per second. So today, uh, I'm going to briefly talk about our logging architectures, just for a little bit of context. And then I'm going to show you how we monitor our, the health of our logging pipeline just by using one single metric. Uh, so let's get into it. We have two logging uh, solutions. One is the sidecar pattern. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, the application write logs to the uh, logging agent sidecar uh, through, uh, through forward or message back protocol. Uh, the logging agent sidecar then uh, sends that uh, logs to the uh, storage backend. The logging agent sidecar uh, is automatically injected by the mutating admission, admission controller. Uh, the application can enable the sidecar injection uh, by adding annotations uh, in their deployment spec. In our case, the logging agent uh, sidecar is Microsoft internal agent, but technically you can replace the logging agent sidecar with FluentBit. Uh, to send the logs to the uh, logging agent sidecar, uh, we instrument the uh, application with the logging library. So one of the downside with the logging library is that uh, when you have applications written in different languages, then you have to support multiple uh, logging library. But uh, we needed the, the logging library for two reasons. One is that we want, uh, our, we want all our uh, application logs uh, to have predefined schema just to simplify the logging queries. And two, uh, is that we, we want to have the uh, application to have the option to either uh, to, be able to, be, uh, to be able to write to standard out and as well to the uh, write, write directly to the uh, sidecar. So the logging agent will, when, when the logging agent see, hey, uh, there is a sidecar on my pod, I will write directly to the uh, sidecar and 
if the application disable the sidecar injection, then all the logs will uh, go to the standard out, which is then uh, will they are handled by the second solution, uh, the forwarder and the aggregator pattern. Uh, it is the most common pattern out there, I believe. Uh, so the, the forwarder is, is a very lightweight uh, daemon set that tells all the container logs on the node and then route them to the aggregator uh, service, which is uh, then subsequently the service will distribute the logs among the aggregator pods. Uh, so, so the aggregator uh, then write those logs to the Azure uh, storage backend. Uh, in our case, it's Azure. Uh, and the, and the aggregator actually uh, does all the business logic to transform uh, the logs and then send them to the sidecar. Uh, we also, for the data safety security, uh, we enable the file system buffering on the forwarder and then also for to, to, to adapt to the load, uh, we enable the HPA on the aggregator. Uh, and next. So let's talk about Fluent Bit Metrics. Uh, so the HTTP server on Fluent Bit, uh, they exp it exposes uh, multiple endpoints. Uh, two of them that uh, we are going to talk about is uh, the metrics endpoint that is in Prometheus format. Uh, this metrics uh, exposes the metrics for its running plug plugin. Uh, the second uh, endpoint is the storage endpoint. It exposes the storage information, but they are in the JSON format. And this is a uh, output of the uh, storage uh, endpoint. So we see chunks. Uh, what is chunks? Chunks is how Fluent Bit groups and store the, the, lo the logs in the file system. So there are two types of chunks uh, the up chunks. Uh, they are they exist in the file system as well as in the as well as in the memory. There are chunks that are currently being processed, and you can configure the maximum number of up chunks allowed in the memory. Uh, the down chunk, the down chunk only exists in the uh, file system. So uh, if your if your logging pipeline if they are healthy. Um, Typically, the down chunks is usually zero or very close to zero. And if your uh, pipeline is congested or slow, then the up chunks then starts, uh, starts to grow. And when it reaches the maximum limit, uh, then the down chunks start to, starts to accumulate. So this is actually the metrics that we use to monitor our uh, logging pipeline. Uh, before moving to the next slide, uh, pay attention to the JSON path of the FS chunks up and down. It is a storage layer chunks, FS chunks up or down. Uh, to export the storage uh, metrics, uh, we use JSON exporter deployed as a sidecar as well. Uh, that you can find the JSON exporter in, in Prometheus Community GitHub. Uh, so this is uh, the, the example of our config. So the name here, uh, Fluent Bit Storage Layer, is the metric name prefix, and the value, the values field, are, is the value uh, is the metric that you want to export. So in this case, uh, is the FS chunks up and FS chunks down, and the exporter uh, to get the metric. Uh, value, the exporter will follow the JSON path. Uh, those, those are the one that is in the curly braces. And if you look at it, it's the storage layer, uh, .chunks, .fs chunks up or down. Uh, we use the Cubes uh, Prometheus stack 
uh, to deploy our Prometheus. Uh, and this is our surface mo monitor configuration. So does anyone use Cube Prom How many people are using Cube Prometheus stack here? OK, cool. So service monitor is a CRD. It basically tell Prometheus where to scrape the metrics. Uh, the first endpoints here is just the metrics uh, endpoint on the Fluent Bit container. Uh, the second endpoint uh, is the prop endpoint on the JSON sidecar container. So the so when when Prometheus scrapes this prop endpoint, uh, it will fetch the JSON metrics from the target, uh, convert them into Prometheus format, and then send the result back to the response. And to just uh, visually uh, test this, you can use kubectl forward. Uh, for example, this. Uh, for example, you can see on the screen. Uh, if you look at the URL, it's the prop endpoint, and then the, the target query parameters. And the result, you'll get the fluent bit in the Prometheus format. So it's the FS chunks up and FS chunks down. Uh, so let's take a look at our uh, live dashboard. Mm, let me switch for a second here. So this is our still loading. So while it's loading, OK, it loads now. Uh, the top panels here, uh, these are the global uh, summary of the down chunks uh, across all the cluster. So it's kind of nice to be able to see your, the overall health uh, on a single uh, pane. And uh, you'll see that uh, the down chunks are pretty much zero. There is most likely five, and then it dropped back down to zero. And these are from Japan East. And you can see this one is from Germany West Central. Uh, so because this is global, the drop down here doesn't work on this panel. Uh, ideally, you can put this on, on a separate dashboard with uh, drill down, uh, but we just consolidate this together. Uh, so the panels on the file storage uh, group, they are the down chunks and the up chunks for, uh, by pod. And you can actually, this is our business region, which is in East US. So we can maybe switch to Brazil South. and change, there is no down chunks, it's super healthy. And if you switch back to East US. Uh, and then in the IO group, the, the panel on the left is the input uh, versus the output rate. And if you look at it, they are kind of like overlapping uh, with each other, uh, which what you expect from a healthy pipeline. Uh, it, oh. Actually, why does it show? Uh, can you switch? Excuse me. Uh, can we switch the camera to the? Uh, can we switch the camera to the like? Uh, my. How do I switch this? Okay. Since we cannot switch this, uh, can we switch this to the uh, the other? Uh, okay, never mind. 
I'll just go ahead and use the pre-screenshot uh, thing. Uh, can we get back to the presentation, please? Okay. Oops. Yeah, so this is the dashboard. The top panel is the global view, uh, down chunks, up chunks. And then next is the input and the output rate. Uh, so if you, if you remember, we look at the overall log volume. Uh, that's actually taken from this uh, graph. So it doesn't, it doesn't include the volume from the uh, logging agent sidecar. So it's only from the forwarder. And the next two panels on the uh, I.O. Is, is the input rate and the output rate by pot. Uh, the last is the errors and the retries. We seldom use it, but it's, it's, a nice, uh, it's nice to have for an additional diagnostic tool. Uh, next, we'll take a look at of, uh, take a look at couple of studies. So, case studies number one. Uh, if you look at here, the down chunks uh, they are growing, but they are growing on only single pot. Uh, the input and the output rate are pretty stable, but then if you look at the input rate by pot there. There are kind of like two outliers uh, with significantly higher input rate than the rest. Uh, the last panel uh, on the bottom right there, it's actually taken from another dashboard. I uh, just shoved it here and took a screenshot. Uh, it's the CPU usage of the folder. And similar to the input rate, uh, there, are, there are two outliers. And if you can see, uh, the forwarder pod that has the highest uh, CPU usage and the uh, highest input rate, uh, they are the same pod as the one with the uh, accumulating down chunks. So what happened here? Uh, so there, are, there is a one, after, there is one tenant that generated too many locks and was. It, it has a very few replicas, so it, so it only happened on one or two nodes. Uh, it's, it generated too many logs and it's hogging resources. So as, re, uh, as a result, uh, our, our forwarder is kind of like struggling and failed to keep up. Uh, our mitigation is basically just add annotation to the app and onboard them to the sidecar solution. And this is case st study number two. Now we see that the down chunks are growing too, but they are growing across all parts. Uh, now if you look at the input rate, uh, there is a very big jump, uh, like around maybe 1645, like maybe from 20K, 30K to 800K. Uh, and then if you look at the aggregator replicas panel, uh, the, the aggregator seems to try to scale up uh, but then it scaled back down again. Uh, and then if you look at the crashing pods, most of the forwarder pods are crashing. So this are actually, this is pretty, was pretty bad ex, uh, incident. So what happened here is that for some reason, the applications like uh, scaling up rapidly uh, while, while the aggregator is adding replica and waiting for the pods to get ready. Uh, the existing replicas were overwhelmed, and pods are crashing. And your, when your pods are crashing, the HPA is not going to work. It was, it's not going to work properly. So the mitigation is for us. At around maybe 1845, there we manually scale up the aggregator, and then if you look at the down chunks, it's uh, the forwarder starts to recover. Uh, so. What, and there are a couple of fixes. Uh, one, of the fixes one of the fixes is to make the HPA more aggressive, so the, the aggregator will, will scale up earlier. Uh, but this is just to alleviate the problem. Doesn't actually, it's not actually bulletproof, uh, because there, there's always a time delay uh, from when the time the 
load starts to increase until all the ag new aggregated pots are ready. Uh, so theoretically, we still can hit this problem. Uh, so we also make the second changes. Uh, the second change is to actually onboard, onboard few applications that both very, very chatty and they, ten, and they have the tendency to scale up rapidly to the sidecar solution. Uh, and what are the key takeaways here? Uh, there is actually no perfect solution for everyone, so choose solution that works best for your environment. Uh, we have the forwarder and aggregator pattern uh, as our default logging solution, uh, but we also have the sidecar solution to handle the uh, heavy, ap heavy application. So be creative. Uh, second point that I want to make is that Kubernetes and FluentBit, uh, they continue to progress and your production environment uh, change over time. So your solution must evolve and adapt uh, to the changes. And Kubernetes, and also, for example, uh, we, we added the sidecar solution just about a year ago uh, and, and also that we are exploring uh, kind of like adding persistency to the aggregator or, or also the idea of merging the uh, forwarder and the aggregator. So we only have a demon set without the aggregator. And finally, uh, last but not least, uh, although Kubernetes simplifies deploying containers uh, in the cloud, it also adds infrastructure uh, complexity. Uh, so uh, to having feasibility on the infrastructure components such as uh, Fluentbit and also choosing the best signal for your monitoring is, is crucial and fundamental in production. Uh, with that, I'll open up for question. So we have about uh, maybe six minutes for question. Yes. Uh, I couldn't hear you. Finally, we have a question. Yeah. Hello. Sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask, you said you're currently using the forwarder aggregator approach, but you're switching to daemon sets? Uh, not, not switching, we are exploring actually, kind of like merge the forwarder and aggregator. Uh, the aggregator is, ex is, if you merge that together, it's, it's expensive on the node, right? Because all then your node then will have to uh, do all the business logics that aggregator does, so it's, it takes resources from the node, uh, so we're still exploring that. Uh, is, uh, is that your question? Do I answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. But I also want to mention that the, uh, the aggregator, although it is expensive, I think it, it works in certain scenario, uh, like, like when you're, like for us in the second, uh, second case study, because when you have the logging sidecar inside your pod together with op your application. If your application scale up, your logging, it, your, logging, uh, your logging agent also scale up together at the same time. So I think that's the advantage, but it's, it is expensive. Okay, uh, thanks for attending my session. Uh, if you have any further question, feel free to Talk to me afterwards. I'll be around uh, today. Thank you. Thank you.